my anxiety of failure is very much my limiting belief. I don't like being alone. It's sort of a lesson that I've always known about myself. It's all about progressing and it's all about making sure that we're doing things right. I know it now. <laughs> like. Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend. Let's get started with what we've learned. The big takeaway from this week was workout progressions. As you know, I love using workouts as an al analogy towards what we're doing here, building business and, and getting better at storytelling. And uh, when I was looking at what to progress first, reps, sets, etc., cetera, uh, the sort of unique takeaway uh, was that form would be the thing that you'd want to progress on first. And uh, I think that's super interesting, something I didn't really think about, but there's always something that you can get better at with your form. And so kind of now in my tiers of progression, and I'm taking it here too, I would always say to you guys as well, progress in the form first. Make sure you're doing it the right way every time consistently, that you minimize on the mistakes and that you pretty much get to a place where it becomes a reflex, then I think you could start to try to make it good, try to make it faster, et cetera, et cetera. But again, it's not about ego. It's all about progressing and it's all about sort of making sure that we're doing things right. So that's my takeaway from this week. Catherine, what did you learn this week? I learned this week that I don't like being alone. Uh, it's sort of a lesson that I've always known about myself, but that I relearned this week being in quarantine. And it's been very interesting trying to to stay busy is um is how i've been coping with being alone and i've gotten a lot of stuff done that i wouldn't have normally done on an everyday schedule because i have time to focus on myself which which has been really nice because i was able to get all of my christmas presents shopping done something that i normally procrastinate in and there's no distractions now um, I think that's great and I just you know on the topic of sort of learning something about yourself learning that you don't like to be alone I mean I think it's good for everybody to do that kind of thinking because you can come up with ways to sort of cover those things and work on them over time so I'm super happy that you're like aware of that and that you're finding ways to sort of deal with it during this unique time thank you for sharing Brian what did you learn last week I learned a lot about how hard building a PC is and a lot about troubleshooting because it was my first time doing it and I had no idea what I was doing. In doing so, I realized how important it is to know, uh, how nice it is to know exactly what's going on with your machine when you're editing. Uh, when I was doing After Effects, I realized like, I had my task manager pulled up and I realized it was bottlenecking at my RAM so I was like, I know what how, how these things work because, you know, they'll tell all these to me, but also it's fun to like, be like, I know it now. <laughs> like, and it's fun to like see it happen and then know exactly why. Yeah, I think we talk a lot about bottlenecks here, of course, and building a computer will certainly uh, just humble you in general and, and help you to really understand what that really even means because there's so many different parts in a computer that end up rendering a video. And so just having an understanding of what's holding you back and what each part is doing, I think is so good because how many times have you guys all sat there going, why is this taking so long? As long as you know that it's not you, you've done everything you could, you can chill. Let the computer do its job and you know what's holding you back in the computer and we're doing everything we can to make sure the computer has as, you know, as open of a system as possible and that all of the parts are sort of equal in power. At that point, your computer is maxed out and there's nothing you could do, so take a deep breath. It's all gonna be okay, right? Thanks for sharing, Brian. Pat, what did you learn last week? A few weeks ago, I, I decided that I want to try and start running in the mornings, but that did not go so well. But I realized that if you take it slow and you do little steps, for example, I've been waking up consistently at 8 a.m. and it feels good, then I'm gonna still incorporate maybe walking or running or even like running a very short distance. That slow step building, and habit building is a very stable way to accomplish bigger goals. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of that, Pat. I, I, like I always say, it's, it's all about progressions and lowering those expectations. I think the first time you spoke about it, you were struggling to figure out how you could even get started and the advice was given. Take the expectations way down. Pace, take 10 paces in your room if that's what it takes to start. Why don't we go ahead and clap it up for Pat for, for being able to start his process of, of learning how to jog every morning. So. 
Yeah, awesome job, dude. And thank you so much for sharing. John Roberts, what did you learn last week? I learned about the Dumont TV network and how this like competitor of NBC and all these big networks back in the 40s and the 50s didn't just make television content, but they were also a TV set manufacturer. It was really interesting to think about, you're not just in like one corner, you're not defined by one thing that you do, you can be like much more and you can do whatever you really put your mind to. And I think that's interesting because I'm wondering what made them fail. I'm wondering if either it's just, you know, content or something um, in the business. I mean, obviously, if they're competing against NBC, NBC is clearly quite a dominant force. I, I am curious. I'd love to know, John Roberts, maybe you can bring it back next week and let us know what was it that brought Dumont down. Sophie, what did you learn last week? Um, so on the topic of bottlenecks, my anxiety of failure is very much my limiting belief and my bottleneck um and you know i think it can be it, it, it it's something that uh you know i think can be told externally but it was very important for me to internalize and i and i think i'm getting better at being able to notice where it exists and falsifying it um and and trying to move past i i think that's awesome sophie I mean, I think that the first step, obviously, is to be aware of these things. And I think, I mean, something I was learning in this past week about self-awareness and about sort of understanding how to recognize when that sort of anxiety is coming on is to practice mindfulness. Um, something that is sort of newer to me as well. Uh, but essentially, as you practice mindfulness, you learn how to slow things down. And when you slow things down, you learn how to separate actions from emotions and that would be the big big defining key here right is how do you when that fear comes on how do you not immediately react off of that fear how can you separate the time that happens between you feeling the emotion and then you taking action based on that emotion again i feels like the theme of the day here is like progression expectations right you want to lower those expectations for yourself on what succeeding means right Something to think about. Thank you so much for sharing. I thought that was super valuable. With that said, thank you guys so much, of course, for sharing every week. Let's get to work. And as always, keep changing. Peace, guys.